now uh, we will continue our lectures in the last lecture we have introduced the concept of a function and then uh, we also seen the uh, some examples of functions so uh, the we want to introduce two things now today the continuity of function continuity and differentiability this is what the main theme of this uh, talk this present lecture okay. so um, if you given a function f which is the in a domain or a region in c so it's a real valued function of the real variable sorry it is the complex valued function of the complex variable and that is what we are going to define it. So, when you for a z in omega, it is a region, of course, omega can be c. So, it can be the entire domain. For the generality, I am writing it as a domain omega and another domain, it is going to, this I call it for the namesake, it is a z plane. This I call it a my w plane. These are all for convenience. So, given z in w, you have a w which is called f of z. But then f of z is also a complex number. Okay. So, here every point z here, z is of the form x plus i y. Okay. f of z is equal to f of x plus i y. So, since w is in c, w can be f of z, can be written as it will have a real part and that real part will depend on the variable x and y. Okay, because this z depends on x and y plus i b of x y. I will make some remarks a little later. We will see in that. In general, in a compact notation, simple notation, we write f equal to u plus i v. Okay, so that is the notation for a complex valued function. Okay. So, for example, f z, f z equal to you have your e power z. If f z equal to e power z, which we have seen already, this is nothing but e power x into cos x plus i sin y. So, here u x y is equal to e power x into cos x cos y and v x y is equal to e power x into sin y. You see? So, you have. So, a very complex function can have a real part which is u and any imaginary part. So, it is a, a real part of your complex function. This is the imaginary part of your complex function. So, it is a function of two variables x and y. Okay. So, you want to define, you already probably know the notion of continuity. So, I want to motivate you the notion of continuity. So, let us uh, remove these things here. So, I will have more space. Okay. So, you have a, uh, with this understanding, you have w is equal to f of z. So, let me keep it that also u plus i. So, we were uh, defining any complex valued function can be defined as f z equal to u plus i v. Exactly what you know about your continuity, I want to understand the continuity of the function. So, you may have some intuitive idea about continuity, but I let me tell you. The best way to view a function think that it, z is an input, z is an input and z going to given a uh, point z which is an input for your function and uh, it is a position or whatever it is corresponding to that you are defining w equal to f of z which you can view it as an output. In practical applications you can never measure because in engineering and physical applications you give this input and output through measurements and you can never give an input exactly so it is you bound to make so if you want to make an input at a particular point z not it is not possible in applications to give a precise value of z not so naturally you make errors in z not when you make an error in z0, what our output should be above z. But then since you are making an error, 
you may not be exactly giving the value of z0 you give something like z0 plus n error that's what you actual input goes actual input goes with an error so you may not be computing the value of f of z0 and error may be very small so you can call it a small delta z so you are actually computing f of z plus delta z z0 plus delta z so though our aim is to compute f of z0 you may be measuring f of z0 plus delta z0 and we want to know this is close enough to this one and this may not happen all the time for example suppose i define a function f of z is equal to 1 over z if z not equal to 0 and then i define 0 when z equal to 0 in other words my f of 0 is equal to 0 the 0 point here the 0 here goes to the point 0 here now suppose i make an error in my input my input z equal to 0 this is your input and i make an error delta z so the delta z may be somewhere here this is my z equal to 0 z not equal to 0 and my this is my delta z but then when i compute now my exactly f of z not f of delta z that will be 1 over delta z so even if i make a small error my f of delta z your measurement is of the output is going large enough and you do not want to use, so you want to incorporate this notion whenever z0 is close enough to uh, some measurement is close enough to z0 you want your output is also close enough this leads to the notion of continuity and since in mathematics this just talking about an approximation close enough a small error all that won't work you want a very very precise definition so let me uh, motivate you the definition once again and after motivating i will give you uh, the kind so what do i want it so you have your x plane z plane so you have your c plane here and you have your w plane here and you have your point z0 here and you are z0 and you are having your f of z0 here and i want to measure f of z0 within a certain accuracy that's what i say because f of z0 is the actual measurement actual output i want it but then i allow certain error certain uh, minimum a certain amount of error is allowed and that error allowed allowance of the error which i see is that i can deviate a given small epsilon that given small epsilon depends on what is your actual experiment how much you can afford an error so given any epsilon and i draw a neighborhood of this one so this is what i have given so this is my epsilon which is a positive number and allow my error within that epsilon my question is that can i make how much error i can make in z0 so that my output error will not be more than epsilon that is the definition that is the content of so given epsilon can i find a some error measurement that measurement i call it a delta so given quantity is epsilon which is corresponding to the allowed error in epsilon then what is my allowed error in my input function or input data and that's a notion of continuity so now let me write down a precise definition f from omega subset of c to c be the given function be the given function we say f is continuous continuous so i will write it continuous at x z not 
if for given epsilon given epsilon positive there exists a delta positive such that modulus of f of z minus f of z naught should be less than or equal to epsilon within epsilon you can call it or less than epsilon both are same whenever mod z minus z naught less than delta okay so that's what i say if i given an epsilon there is a delta if i choose any z within that delta neighborhood this will be within here that's the meaning of that so in other words in terms of the open desk in other words if i this neighborhood the image of this neighborhood this you know it's an open disk with center z not and radius delta if i take an image of that that is f of z not it should be within that it should be you know ball of f of z not etc that's all the continuity tells you so yeah, and this we have we will write it as so we will write as we will write it as limit of z tends to z not f of z is equal to f of z not okay that's the thing which you want to do it okay so there is an immediate corollary to get familiarized with this you should be working lot of examples work out when a function is continuous when a function is not continuous the example which i have given for example the function f of z is equal to 1 over z for z not equal to 0 and 0 when z equal to 0 is continuous at all points in c except at the origin origin it is not continuous except at the origin this you have to prove it you prove this i am not going to prove it here because all involves you need a lot of time so we don't prove it even you take a z not different from zero and prove that it is continuous so it's an exercise if z not not equal to zero prove f is continuous continuous at the origin f prove f is continuous at the point z not this involves some work to prove that given an epsilon you choose an epsilon and show that this in other words you show that given epsilon show this is what with the given epsilon show that there exists delta positive such that okay modulus of 1 over z minus modulus of 1 over z not is less than epsilon whenever uh, modulus of z minus z not less than delta this is what you have to prove it so to produce a delta positive so that this inequality is true so you work with that and show that all the interesting functions other examples okay uh, e power z sin z cos z the polynomial p z equal to sigma a k z power k k equal to 0 to n or all continuous or all continuous everything requires a proof you may not be able to prove everything but then 
and you have your familiar theorem is f is continuous, g is continuous, f plus g is continuous, f g is continuous under similar assumptions uh, you will be able to prove it. Okay, so there are plenty of example, but if you do it the functions 1 over z minus z naught z1 is not continuous at z1, not continuous at z1. So, if you take 1 over z1 into z minus z2 is continuous in c minus z1 z2, except at z1 z2 these are continuous. e power 1 over z is not continuous at z equal to 0. So, you see, so you can think of continuity. But look at sin z f z equal to uh, f z is equal to sin z by z or z not equal to 0 equal to 1 at z equal to 0 is continuous, continuous at all points. So, this looks like there is a discontinuity, but then you know that limit z tends to 0, this will go to 1 and uh, you can still prove that it is continuous. So, you can have plenty of examples. So, let me now write a corollary in terms of u and v. In terms of u and v. So, if f equal to u corollary, if f equal to u plus i v is continuous, then u and v are real valued functions of the two variable. So, you see u is a mapping from omega to r, u v, v is also mapping from omega to r. These are all real valued, okay. but two variable function. Here omega you think it as a, so every a real valued functions of the real variable of the real variable x comma y okay then f is continuous if and only if u v are continuous so you can have the continuity so here i want to make one important remark Okay, which I did not make it earlier. When C is defined, we define some algebra, some remark which I want to tell. Okay, algebra, addition and multiplication. But then I also remarked at that point of time, the real plane, real plane R2, there is no product, there is no product. Okay. It is only a vector space. If you know vector space otherwise, uh, if you do not know it is all right. So, because this is a kind of important remark, those who know it. So, C differs from R2 by its algebra. The algebra in C and the algebra in R2 are two different things. And that makes the distinction between C and R2. On the other hand, the convergence in our topology, which I told topology is same in C and R, same in C and R2. So, the open disk, open neighborhoods, neighborhood system all have the same thing, absolutely no thing. So, as far as the geometry or convergence is concerned, there is no difference between the C and R2. What makes this distinction is its algebraic structure. So, the fundamentally it has a different algebraic structure making it a field, this is only you have a vector space structure. So, there is no field concept, there is no, no natural product. You may see dot product etc, but that is something different, that is not a product I am talking about it. Okay? So, to check your continuity, you also it is enough to check your uh, continuity of the real value to functions. Okay, that is an important thing I want you to tell you and now we will go back to the other property of uh, uh, 
differentiability. Okay. So let me erase this also so that we will have some more space. Ah, this is this duster is better and the other dust. All right, yeah. So we will go to the concept of differentiability. I want to start with a, this is what it makes the complex function theory and the real function theory entirely different. Soon you will see some property. So we want to see an important remark before going there. Let's begin with an important remark. Okay, to us because this is the most important concept we are going to see. Soon you will see other terminologies for this is called holomorphic, or you will also see concepts like analytic. As far as complex function theory is concerned, you will see that these are more or less the same concepts. That's why. So, how does a function define? So, this is uh, please listen to this point. It's a, it's a very subtle point, and this subtle point you have to understand. So, given a z, you are defining f of z, and then after that f of z, you are writing it as a function of x and y plus i v of x y. But normally, when you recall, when you define a function. In terms of a variable, you try to write the function in terms of that variable. Here, even though it is a function of z, you are writing it as a function of x and y. You are not writing it as a function of z. Why are we doing that? So, the question is that, is it possible to write it as a function of z all the time or it is not possible to write it as a function? So, our the natural question is that, this is your natural question. Can we write z, f of z, can we write f of z as a function of z? That is a very natural question because whenever z is your variable and when you are writing a function, you always write in terms of the, when you are writing two variables x and y, you write it as a function of uh, two variables x and y. But when you are thinking it as a complex variable, you are not thinking it as a function of two variables. You are actually thinking it as a function of z variable. So, you want to know whether again, is it possible or is it not possible. Look at this function. For example, I define this is also a meaningful function 2x plus i y. Then if you expand 1x to if you do it, this x plus z. This cannot be written as a function. Now, x cannot be written as a, in terms of z alone. It is not possible, it is not possible to write it as a symbol, to write it as a function of z alone. So, the question is that, what are all those functions the class of functions, we would like to know the class of functions uh, which can be written as a function of z alone. Okay? And that class of functions, we call it actually the genuine or true functions of complex variable. True or genuine functions. This may not, uh, this terminology may not have used in many books, but uh, that is a natural question. If you can write that natural question, answer that natural question, uh, we would be happy and it is, uh, we want to know that class. And this class of functions turn to, to be the class of differentiable functions and holomorphic functions and analytic functions. And the, essentially, the study of complex analysis is the study of these true genuine functions. Okay. So, let us now define the differentiability. Okay. With that kind of important remark, 
keep this important uh, thing i will recall this once again later probably if i get some time again so we will revisit this uh, re remark at a later time after introducing differentiability so let's go to the differentiability concept so the differentiability concept again as i said the algebra is the one which changes c the convergence is the same and definition of differentiability is going to be the same okay so with that so you have your definition you are talking about differentiability differentiability okay so f from omega z to c and let uh, some point z not is in c okay is it omega then open set so we say f is differentiable differentiable at z not if the limit if the if the limit means the following limit limit of z tends to z not okay f of z minus f of z not you already know the limit of a sequence so this is a limit of that if the limit exists as you see that if you are given some sequences or a thing the limit may or may not exist probably we will see an example at a later time even if the function is continuous this limit may not exist in the real case you know the example real case you know that fx equal to mod x is continuous but not differentially differentiable not differentiable at the origin the same thing happens if i take now f of z is equal to mod z is continuous okay okay uh, i will come back to this one but f is not differentiable in fact it is not you don't get the differentiability in any place not just at the origin we will see that f prime does not exist what is f0 here f0 is equal to 0 so f of uh, f of z okay z tends to f of z minus f of 0 by z if you want to compute this is equal to mod z by z the question is that whether this limit exists so this is does the limit exist that is the question does the limit exist think about it I will tell you some more remarks it should be bad does the limit exist the answer is no ok answer is no ok so this does not have a limit and then you cannot find the limit so the differentiability is fine but I want you to tell you something more about it let me remove this remark ok so uh, one of the important thing you should understand is that when I am taking this limit I can uh, this limit so you have a point here z not and then trying I am trying to this is your re, uh, parallel to your real axis this is parallel to your that one so z tends to z not means z can up z can approach to z not in any curve you like it it can approach this way it can approach this way it can approach like this or it can uh, it can approach like a single point like that in a discrete fashion whatever way the limit uh, approaches z approaches to z not when i write this one the meaning is that z approaches z not 
So Z becomes closer and closer to Z naught in the sense of convergence I have defined. So whenever that run, this should have a limit. That's the meaning of that. The interesting thing which I am going to do it soon, depending on that whichever way you approach, you can approach through the x axis if you want, you can approach through the y axis if you want or you can approach the any way you like it. All of them may end up giving different different limits. So when I say that the limit exists, all of them should coincide. So the one of the advantages of that, this will give you different formulas for computation of a, a, the derivative. So whenever this limit exists, we denote by if this exists, we denote this by f prime of z naught. Or this also will be denoted by df by dz evaluated at z naught. So these are all two different notations for its derivative. This is the exact notation you want it. What I am trying to tell you that approach can be different way and different approaches may lead to different formulas and for computational formula which I am going to do now. Okay. So I want you to give you something interesting. So z is equal to, I can rewrite this formula in a different way. It's, since z is approaching to z naught, I can write z equal to z naught plus delta z and delta z. So z tends to z naught is equivalent to delta z tends to 0. Okay. So I can write that. So my limit should be so and then z naught is equal to z is equal to x plus i y. So let me use this notation because you have to write it and uh, delta z is equal to delta z x plus i delta y. Therefore again delta z tends to 0 is equivalent to both the same delta x tends to 0 and delta y tends to 0. Both happens together. You have to understand all this convergence. So get familiarized with the convergence which I have taught you in the last class and before coming back you should have familiarity, familiar with the examples and do that one. So delta z comes to 0. So I want to write, I want to compute this thing to do that one. So my x plus i y is equal to x plus delta x okay, plus i y plus delta y. Okay. So my f prime of, so, so assume that f is differentiable. So my f prime of z naught is equal to my limit delta z tends to 0. I am going to derive some interesting formula now. Okay of what is this one u of x plus delta x okay uh, uh, y plus delta y plus i v of x plus delta x y plus delta y I will do that completely by uh, delta x plus delta y delta z you write it this is about the f of z naught plus thing minus u of x y plus i v of x y by delta z. Okay. So I will combine these terms here together that is equal to limit I know that delta z tends to 0 equivalent to delta x tends to 0 and delta y tends to 0. So I will write in that form delta x tends to 0, delta y tends to 0 and now I combine the real end thing you will have u of x plus delta x, y plus delta y minus u x y by delta x plus i delta y Okay, so still uh, this is there delta z plus v of x plus delta x y plus delta y minus v x y by x delta x plus delta y. 
Now I am going to do an approaching. So lo look at this thing. So let's look at this more. Let me do it more clearly here. I said I can approach anyway. So I have your Z naught here. So now I try to approach from here. How does the points will look like here? This will be big, like Z naught. I am not changing my Y. I am only changing my X. So this will be something like delta X. If I take a point here, it will be Z naught plus delta Y. So you see, along this line, there is no change in Y. So I can approach this delta Z the way I like it. So let me write down that clearly here in this part. So if I, so, so I choose here in this, I can choose the way I like it. So choose delta Z is equal to delta X goes to 0 and delta Y equal to 0. If I choose this option, that means I am approaching to Z naught along this direction. If I do that one, if I compute that there, so my F prime of Z naught will be limit delta X tends to 0 of U of X plus delta X Y minus U X Y by delta X there is no delta plus there is an I here which I am missed here there is an I here there is an I here which I missed so that plus I V of X plus delta X Y minus V X Y by delta X. Now you can recognize the real variable k. What does this one? This is a real valued function. I am taking limit delta x tends to 0, keeping the variable y fixed. So this is not, and delta x tends to 0. So this is nothing but my partial derivative. So this is nothing but my partial derivative du by dx. Of course, evaluated everything at x naught y naught. Z naught is equal to, if you have an X naught, Y naught, you can keep that point here. X, uh, if you, uh, uh, yeah, here I did not put it that one. Here I have to put everywhere. Z naught is equal to X naught plus I Y naught. So I have to write here Y naught, X naught, Y naught. This is U X naught, Y naught, X naught, Y naught. I have to put everywhere X naught, Y naught because you are evaluating at that point x naught y naught y naught x naught so here also i will put it x naught here i will put y naught x naught y naught x naught y naught again x naught y naught okay so you get that one so this is nothing but my partial derivative evaluated at x naught y naught and plus i, this is my partial derivative evaluated at x. So you have a formula now. So you see, so my f prime of z naught have a formula. You got one formula for my derivative. If the derivative x is, you just differentiate with respect to x. That's it. So you have your formula f of z is equal to plus i v, which you have it. Then f prime of z naught is equal to du by dx and i dv by dx. This I have obtained by taking a special case here. Now I choose another way. This is one way of choosing. Now if I choose delta z is equal to uh, delta a. Now if I choose uh, delta x tends equal to 0 and delta y tends to 0, what do we get it? We have to do the same process here. If I choose that way, I will get my f prime of z naught. This is a very, very important calculation. So, you have to be carefully done that. 
this is limit delta y tends to 0, this is another way I am computing, let us compute that one, here delta x is 0, so you have your u of x naught y naught plus delta y minus u x y and here below you have your delta x is 0, so you have your i delta y, you have to keep that and below plus you will have the similar thing v of x naught y naught plus delta y minus v of x naught x naught y naught v of x naught y naught by i delta y, this is what you have computed. Of course, i is a constant, so I can bring it out. Now, x naught is fixed here, you are taking the rate of change with respect to the y variable. So, what you get is here, this is 1 over i, this is nothing but your du by dy, evaluated at x naught y naught and this is, uh, there is an i here also. Uh, so, there is an i here, should not miss anything. So, plus there will be an i here and this i, two i's will cancel. So, you will get dv by dy at x naught y naught. That is an interesting formula. So, this is you have one, so you have a prime of z naught, you have computed two formulas. Of course, this you can write it as once again this is 1 over i, so you multiply and divide by i, you will get i by i square. So, for example, let me do a small calculation, 1 over i is equal to i by i square, that is equal to i by 1 minus 1, that is equal to minus i. So, 1 over i is minus i. So, you can write this as minus i du by dy plus dv by dy, you see. So, you have two formulas, one is this formula, so you have a formula number 1 and you have a formula number 2, so you have two formulas now, okay. Uh, so, you have two formula, so that two formulas provide you something interesting, okay. The, since f prime, if so f is differentiable at z naught, thus f is differentiable at z naught, differentiable at z naught, that implies you have this formula from 1 and 2, from 1 and 2, what do we get it? these two formulas, du by dx plus i du by dv by dx is equal to minus i du by dy plus dv by dy, okay. So, you have two formulas, okay. So, you can equate now, real and equating real and imaginary parts, equate it real and imaginary parts, what do you get it? Imaginary parts, you get the famous equations du by dx equal to dv by dy, this formula is not difficult to remember, you start with u with the first variable, you take the other thing with respect to the other variable and then you want du by dy with the minus dv by dx. So, you do not have to really blindly remember, if you have some strategy and in mathematics you need always strategies to remember the formula. This is du by dx, it is with the other parts, with u with respect to x, then you have v with respect to y, when you take u with respect to y, you have v with respect to x with a minus sign in the second part. This is the famous cauchy riemann equations. So, what it says that when f is differentiable, 
f is differentiable then so you have your theorem f is differentiable at x naught then f is so what is the most surprising fact up to certain conditions on this this formula is the converse is also true so essentially you have uv a, a two real valued functions and if it satisfies uh, the cauchy riemann equations with some continuity assumption then such a function is also differentiable at x not the power of this one okay so it is a, a partial differential equations the real and imaginary parts of a differentiable function satisfies cauchy riemann equations so one shouldn't be forgetting this equation so if it is differentiable you will have that cauchy riemann equations okay so so uh, yeah so these are the two people cauchy and riemann together with weierstrass are the persons who, who laid the foundations of differential uh, complex analysis in the 19th century and uh, he further went on to prove many things including the uh, what is that uh, riemannian geometry and that does uh, some few decades before einstein proved his relativity theory so the fundamentals of mathematics used the riemannian geometry was developed by riemann and others and the main thing was in the complex analysis so we will continue this and we try to give some examples and try to prove the converse of this theory to uh, yeah it has some subtle arguments i may not be able to give the all the subtle arguments uh, but we will more or less see this also leads to the differentiability and then we will prove little more few more things